does turn over fairly easily. Mind you, there's absolutely no compression or valve train on it, so it's just turning the bottom end over. Pretty sure this engine turns clockwise. There are some engines that turn anti-clockwise, but there's not that many of them, mostly all of them turn clockwise. The firing order for this engine is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, so even though this, this, the pistons, the two uh, center ones, go up and down together and the two outer ones go up and down together, so like for example, the, the number one cylinder right now could be on the intake stroke, and then the number two piston could be on the compression, and then it would be ignition on the second cylinder, and now the number one cylinder is compressing, and it ignition on the first cylinder and you have exhaust on the second one and so on. Well, you get the point of that. The boards don't look that bad considering on the cylinders that the pistons are higher up in the board and the water didn't get to them. There's considerable amount of the water marks in them. You can see the rest of the stains on the first bore. You can't really feel any scoring, but this engine is rebuildable, but I am scrapping it because I have absolutely no use for it, and there's another one of these engines right over there that came out of a running 510 when it was pulled, it was about 90,000 miles on it. Yeah, this one here is the worst for rust, you can see it's just everywhere. You can see probably it won't pass the rings of the seat through, so the rings are absolutely shot in the cylinder. The back one also does have some discoloration in it, but again, it's not too bad, but blew the head gasket, so you kind of need that for it to run. Here's a look at the bottom end, the crankshaft and everything will sump off. The oil pan. And got some sludge in it, it's not too bad. I've seen worse, but. You get the point, it's an old engine, but not too bad. This has had moisture in it at one point because you can't see surface rust on the crankshaft. Especially noticeable right there. The camera focuses, you can see the light red specks, but the Oil strainer pickup right in the middle of it. That's it. That actually looks fairly good. It's not sludged up or anything too badly. And you would have a oil gallery that goes from the pickup through the side of the block to the oil pan. Excuse me, the oil pump should be, I believe, on the side of the engine. Here's a look at how the rotating assembly looks like. Five main bearings, which will be taken off shortly, as well as we'll be pulling the pistons out and removing the crankshaft completely. See the bottoms of the pistons and the bores. There. Bearing caps are removed off the connecting rods. You can see the crankshaft's in fairly good shape on all the journals. As well as the bearings are still in really good shape, which I'll look at those in a few minutes when I remove the pistons and go take that inside the garage and have a closer look where there's no glare. So now just to tip the engine on its side and remove the pistons. These might be fairly difficult to remove because there's a fairly large 
piston ridge up front, coming on top of the bore from the rest buildup and so on. Here's the heading water inside the cylinders. You have to pound them out. Stuffing on the piston skirts from Before I start taking the main caps off, I figured I'd show you how just how easily this crankshaft spins with no uh, pistons attached to it. It's like on, it's like it's on roller bearings. It doesn't take much force at all to turn it, which is a good thing. That's how it's supposed to be. 